give over to our pastor, Pastor Kweta Simangani. We want to thank God yesterday. Um, what I got for myself was uh, about, who, uh, about who you are has been established. All that we are doing now, we are just negotiating the price. We want to say to our fellow friends who are here, who are joining us through Facebook, who are joining us through YouTube, even on this platform, make it a point that every day you don't pick two, you don't pick three, you just pick one thing that will keep you throughout the course of the day. Without any waste of time, Muruti, thank you so much. God bless you, and uh, may you bless us as you always do. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Tabo. And thank you very much, Palesa, for the prayer. I greet you all, beloved sons and daughters of the living God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our brother. It is an honor to join you, for you are my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. Um, it is really a privilege to be able to have a family such as yourself uh, that is together with you in the battle of life. And so we treasure these moments, we treasure these mornings when we can hold hands together spiritually and come before the throne of our Father. I want to read a couple of texts this morning. Uh, the first one is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15, which says, The whole family in heaven and on earth. The whole family in heaven and on earth. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Part B says, He is the head of every power and authority. Having cancelled of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And to this I say, amen. And having disarmed uh, the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And finally, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Let us close our eyes in prayer. Father in heaven, speak to us. May you touch my lips and I humble myself and ask that, Lord, you may override the humanity so that you may reach your children. And may you speak to all of us. May you encourage us and may your power, your recreative power be at work this morning. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, beloved, prayer is a spiritual warfare. Prayer is part of a spiritual warfare. And prayer has a clear political agenda. Uh, God as king over all on earth and in heaven. That is the goal. That is the agenda of prayer. You see, the Lord's prayer ends, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When you come before the throne in prayer, what you are engaging in is not simply request. What you're engaging in is not simply conversation. What you're engaging in is warfare. And I want to submit this morning that we have been given a tool through which we can have victory in Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is Lord. Christ is King. Christ has conquered the devil, disarmed the powers and authorities. He has triumphed over them by the cross. Christ sits on the throne and Christ and in Christ, we too have the victory. Uh, families, beloved, often have inner conflict. Uh, I want you to understand when we speak about spiritual warfare, where we are coming from. Families often have inner conflict. You remember Abraham's family, they had conflict. Hagar ran away with Ishmael, Abraham's son, because of conflict in the home. Is Isaac's family had conflict. Uh, Isaac's wife connived with his son, Jacob, to deceive him, Isaac, that is, 
from the birthright and the blessing. Jacob's family itself had conflict. His sons sold his favorite son, Joseph, to the Ishmaelites and Midianites and told him that he, that is Joseph, had died at the claws of a wild animal. You get the point. If there is conflict in your family, beloved, may God restore love and peace. Many of us in our homes, uh, in settings that are dysfunctional, or our relationships may have began with sweetness, but they have turned sour. Our relationships and our families uh, seem to have had the phone put. And if there's any institution that the devil is attacking, it is family. And so I pray for your family today. But surprise, surprise, uh, conflict began in God's own family. Follow me. When Adam and Eve were created, they already were sons and daughters of God. They already were sons of God. Recall God's question to Job in Job 38 verse 4. It says, where were you at my laying the foundation of the earth? When the morning stars were singing together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. As God was creating, this is the picture we get, as God was creating, the sons of God were watching and they're shouting for joy. They were shouting for joy as they watched God in the splendor, in the miraculous, in the glorious work of creation. One of these sons of God, one of these part of this family of God that is described before we come into the picture. One of them is described in Ezekiel 28. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were anointed as the guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you matata asimoloha konefa yakala inkinga right here this is where the problems began when this one who was perfect when god created him when this one who was a part of the peaceful family of god sin was found in his heart and the bible then begins to describe what happens you were filled with violence it says and you sinned and so the bible says i threw you to the earth isaiah 14 also describes him it says you uh, how you have fallen from heaven morning star son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth and that is unfortunate for us and uh, revelation itself gives a warning to us because it says that the devil has been cast down to the earth and he knows that his time is short but back to uh, the old testament it says you say it in your heart this is where it began i will ascend to the heavens i want you to understand uh, the political happenings here i will raise my throne above the stars of god i will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly i will make myself like the most high beloved this is an attempt at a coup d'etat this is an attempt at nothing else than to dethrone god from his throne and to sit on the throne of god to be the one that is taking care of that heavenly family heavenly family and of that great assembly. In Job chapter one, we begin to understand when the assembly comes, uh, when the sons of God come to present themselves before God, watch this, this Satan comes with them. This one that has just been described and his report for they are all bringing a report is that he is coming from the earth. This liar and murderer, he lies about God and uh, goes about as a thief to kill and steal and to destroy all of the malady, all of the sickness, all of the trouble in this world has come because of this began with other spiritual beings in God's family. And he deceived them and took a third of the angels, the Bible says, but he is on earth right now, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Beloved, this is what you ought to understand, that we are in a spiritual battle between good and evil. And this angel, this son of God, this one who was part of the family of God, he went astray, but he took others with him in warfare against God and Today he is here still waging that warfare. 
Um, he does not do his work alone in this battle against uh, against the battle between good and evil. And he has convinced the spiritual beings by deception that they can overthrow the throne of God. And so by sin, those that sin become a part of this great agenda. Uh, when you are to understand what Paul says, Paul says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The word that Paul uses when he says wages is opsonion. And that is not just uh, wages of an ordinary citizen. Opsonion are the stipends that were given to soldiers. And so he is saying that when you sin, you have enlisted yourself as a soldier and you are participating in warfare. You are not just doing ordinary citizenry stuff. You are not just being a common man in, the, in, in, in a kingdom. You are engaged in warfare and you will get your soldiers paid. And so, beloved, sinners are also working together with the devil. And as we saw yesterday, unfortunately, we often have, have made it appear as if we are better than others. And yet what we are when we sin is established. All we are doing in sinning is uh, uh, negotiating the price. But I want to say today that that is not what we ought to be. In Christ, we are not here to negotiate the price. In Christ, we are established at the sons and daughters of God. And we must pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit that transforms us to become like God, to become like Christ, restored as images of God in this world. Uh, but beloved, I want you to follow this. I have sometimes wondered why God allows evil. When you look at what happens here in this coup d'etat, God allows uh, the devil and he allows this Satan together with his minions to wage their warfare and he gives them a long rope to hang themselves right he gives them a long rope to hang themselves have you ever wondered why God allows evil why he has allowed for this situation to maintain and persist well, there is no other way I am submitting this morning that evil could have been defeated or could be defeated or can be defeated, except if it manifests itself, except if we all see it for what it is, except when the universe is able to see where Lucifer's project ends, where God's character also is fully contrasted with this project, where God's project and the devil's project, God's character and the devil's character can be fully compared and contrasted where this one can grow to its full maturity so that all can be able to see what it is that sin is, what it is and where it is that it leads. Satan's character must be fully revealed. And this is exactly what transpires. Watch Satan's project. Adam and Eve immediately started blaming each other after sin entered, after they went onto the side of the devil. Their son Cain murdered their son Abel. Uh, by the time you come to the flood, the sons of God are in full rebellion and are causing havoc on the earth. There is a little reprieve with the flood, but then comes Babel. The dispersion of people and the division into nations and tongues also has a spiritual dimension because different territories and nations have different spiritual entities overseeing them. This is why when you go through the rest of the Bible story, you begin to see that this nation has a particular God. That nation has a particular God. They each have different gods. This is not just a description of people uh, who, who, who are taking none things and worshipping them. This is true spiritual warfare where these previous sons of God, these spiritual entities have come onto the earth and they have claimed territory as it were. And you have humanity that is worshipping that which is not the creator 
after that which has been created. These may have been unseen beings, but they are spiritual forces nonetheless. And so we have spiritual forces when Israel comes into being. What you are seeing there is a spiritual warfare, not just between nations, but between gods. And this is exactly the story of the Old Testament, because God has taken over. He has, in fact, created one nation, a nation to whom he says, I will be your God and you will be my people. And through you, I will manifest and reveal to the whole earth who the true God of the world is, who the creator is. And he says, Abraham, I am Jehovah Jireh. I don't want you to be confused because these other gods are calling for child sacrifices. They are perfecting worship and spirituality. To you, I want you to understand my character. And so uh, Abraham begins to understand who God is there on that mountain. It's he, be, he, he saw God on that mountain. When Isaac was laying there, he saw the character of God because he says, I am Jehovah Jireh. You don't have to offer a child sacrifice to me. No, you will not slay Isaac. I will provide myself as a lamb. I will lay down my own life. Let's make a covenant. I want you to understand who I am. God will lay down my life. My way is the way of self-sacrificial love, selfless love. The devil is a liar and the universe will see it. Uh, Abraham, I want you to understand that I am different than all of these. And so uh, this is why God speaks to the Israelites and says, please don't follow these other ones. Don't follow these other gods. I want you to be clear on who I am because they are perfecting everything be clear on who I am and worship me alone. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, beloved, uh, my love is patient, God says. Let the devil uh, throw everything and I will show my power, not by preventing his evil, but by exposing it and overcoming it. I want you to listen to that. God will overthrow the devil, not by preventing his evils, but by allowing his evils to be manifest and in those evils, overcoming them and exposing them. Follow me. Let him make the fire seven times hotter if he wishes. I will not prevent the fire from being made seven times hotter. Let him make it seven times hotter. Yes, in fact, let him throw my boys in the fire, but I will show my power in in the fire, Nebuchadnezzar knew the power of God, not because God's people were prevented from being thrown in the fire, no, but because they were thrown in the fire. It was because they were thrown in that God reveals himself, this God has power over the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, your God will be my God. In fact, Babylon, there is no God like their God. Are you going through a fire today? Maybe it is seven times hotter hotter than it ought to be. Uh, beloved, may God walk with you in the fire. May he preserve you in the fire and protect you, not from the fire, but in the fire. Sometimes I have wished that God would keep me from trouble. I would wish that God would keep me from stresses, that God would keep me from the common issues of this world. But oh, beloved, our spirituality, our prayers, our faithfulness do not exempt us from the troubles of this world. Uh, you ought to understand uh, I hate to break it to you, but our prayers, beloved, look at Daniel. Daniel was a praying man. Daniel was an honest man. They tried to find fault with him and they couldn't find fault with him. In fact, Daniel was faulted for his very spirituality. Daniel was faulted for his very faithfulness. And watch this. It is his prayers that led him to the lion's den. I want you to know, beloved, in this battle, this is not for the fearful. This battle is for those that understand 
understand that we are soldiers of the Lord. This battle is for those that understand that we are waging in warfare. It is not for those that will uh, tumble and fall at the nearest little temptation, at the nearest little struggle. We must be ready for the devil to throw it all and say like Shadrach, Mishnah, and Abednego that let him uh, throw us in the fire if he wishes. But our God is able to deliver us from the fire. And even if he does not, we will not bow down. Beloved, there is a time of trouble such as never has been that is coming onto this world. I want to challenge you, prayer warriors, to understand that we will not be, as it were, exempted from troubles in this world, but there will be a time of trouble when the uh, Son of Man comes. There is a question that is asked, who are these? And the Bible says, these are they that have come out of great tribulation. Yes, indeed, we were in great tribulation, but we were delivered while we were in the fire. God was with us in the fire. I want you to understand that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. So let the devil's uh, plot go on. Let the devil chant out his fire and build those gallows. Let him throw everything at the Son of Man. Let him make a crown of thorns and nail him at the cross. Pierce him on the side if he wishes. Let all the demons in hell gather to plot and kill the Messiah. Peter, put that sword down. Let the devil expose himself because that is how God wins in the end by allowing the devil fully to expose himself, fully to express himself. And in that moment, in that fire, in that hell, God defeats the devil. The universe watched in horror as Lucifer's true colors shone uh, through in his high definition and crystal resolution. There it was. It could not be mistaken anymore. The universe can never be lied to again. They know who the devil is. He is a liar. He is a murderer from the beginning. And at the cross, his colors were put forth for all to see. At the cross, now the lie has been exposed. There is nothing more that can be said because now who he is, is known for all to know. It appears, beloved, that darkness has overcome light. It appears at the cross that Satan uh, is able to take the throne. But, oh, beloved, wait until Sunday morning. The devil has stung with the sting of death. But what he does not know is that Jesus is the author of life itself. And what he does not know is that his sting is the sting of a honeybee. Oh, beloved, when a honeybee stings, the bee itself dies a gruesome death. That sting that it, that it meets out on its victim is its own end. What Satan should have known is that uh, Jesus is the author and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is life itself. Sunday morning, Jesus comes out with the keys of death and hate. He is alive. He is alive. Jesus is alive. And Satan is defeated. And we too can say today, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because like Nebuchadnezzar, we have been able to see his power over the fury of the enemy. Like Nebuchadnezzar, we've been able to see that though the fires are made hotter than they're made meant to be, yes. but this God has power over the last strength of the devil. You see, it would not have made sense for God to simply eliminate him when he had not fully expressed his strength. But he says, give me all you've got so that all may know that all you've got is nothing to me, for I am a creator of all. I made you and your own strength is borrowed from me. And beloved, I want you to understand today that when we pray, we are in Christ waging this war for thine is the kingdom, the power and and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you are, you are casting out demons. Wherever that you are, you have power over spiritual entities. For in Christ, when Christ overcomes, you overcome. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And watch this. Paul also goes on to argue that if we are in Christ in death, we are with him also in the resurrection. If we are with him on Friday, we are also with him on Sunday. If we are with Christ when he says it is finished, we are with him also as he ascends. And so Ephesians 1 verse 6 says, for we have been lifted up with Christ and seated with him in heavenly places. Oh, beloved, when you are in Christ, no demon in hell can do anything to you. When you are in Christ, you have power and authority over entities, over powers in this world. When you are in Christ, there is nothing that can bring you as a victim, for you are 
more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, beloved, I wish you would understand that the family affairs that we are in uh, come from a long time ago. The struggle is a family issue that comes from a long time ago. But we in Jesus' blood have been given the power and the victory. And I pray today that all of us, wherever we are, may we wage spiritual warfare. May the devils tremble. May the devil not have his way anywhere. May he be cast out wherever he thinks he is an authority. May in Jesus' name he be taken out in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for you've given us the victory. We want to thank you for at the cross, you defeated the enemy at the cross. We want to thank you because light won over darkness, love won over hate. We want to thank you that at the cross, we know who you are. We want to thank you for at the cross, we also know who the devil is. The devil is a liar and we will never be deceived again. Father, may your Holy Spirit keep us on the path. May the Holy Spirit give us what we need to continue this family affair of the kingdom of God to make sure that indeed in our lives, in our communities, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.